Hey, Bomb Squad, if you're a comedian or a podcaster looking for an affordable website solution with a modern look, then we recommend Pucks Hub. With a Pucks Hub website, you can set up your new website in minutes with easy to use pre built templates. Pucks Hub websites are customizable and can easily be integrated with other platforms like Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. The best part? Pucks Hub plans are only $5 per month. We use Pucks Hub for our website at the Art of Bombing podcast, and we think you should too. That's why we partnered with Pucks Hub to offer listeners a free 60 day trial. Head over to PucksHub.com to subscribe and use promo code AOB pod at checkout for your 60 day free trial and then pay only five dollars per month after that take your career to the next level with your own pucks hub website today dan bublitz comedy productions My friend Dan, he's got a podcast, cause all comics need a podcast, and nobody had a podcast called The Art of Bombing, so Dan went out and bought a tape deck, who knows why he bought a tape deck, now cast don't get played on tape decks, but Dan is from the 80s, so hey there all you funny jerks, come talk to Dan about your work, tell him all about your worst times, it's The Art of Bombing. Welcome to an all-new episode of the Art of Bombing Presents Between Bombs Callbacks, where Josh and I call back the most recent episode. This week, we are calling back episode 280 with Jade Rose. How's it going, Josh? It's going well, and it's been a bit since we've had a newer Comic-Con. It has been, yeah. It's been a a little bit. I, I, I guess I can't remember the last time we had a newer comic on. But, yeah, I'm sure if you say it's been a bit, then it's probably true yeah. because well, you're the is... one that keeps track of that stuff. Well, here's – okay, <laughs> then it's time It's time we did a little research. Uh, well, while see. you're doing this research, Go I'm ahead. just going to tell everybody, it, you know, what we do. We're, we're calling back the most recent episode. We're talking about some of the takeaways. Uh, they're going to make their – you know, the context of the takeaways make more sense if you listen to the episode. So we're going to just – while he's doing his research, you guys go – uh, listen to the last episode, episode 280, which Jade Rose, and then come back. Okay, now welcome that you've back. listened to it, yeah, well, yeah, welcome back. I think yeah, Josh well, while, has got while they were listening done. to that, Dan, I went back and listened to episode 264 with Emily Page, which is the last time we had a comic who had started during the pandemic. Okay, so she's yeah, a newer comic. Is, yep, and um. You know, Hurricane Sandy was all her fault, <laughs> but she hit, she started in uh, in the pandemic as well. And it's just this weird flip flop with these comics who start there in the pandemic. It sounds more like Jade started doing maybe a, a mixture of live and virtual shows. Mm-hmm. I didn't pick up in the episode that she did a lot of virtual. Shows. I don't think she did a lot of virtual because I think Colorado was pretty, pretty open. I think at the time she started. Yeah. Cause I think because the weather here isn't as bad, I think they were doing some outside shows and things. Nice. So, okay. Well, yeah. Interesting. She's probably still had a a different ride than a lot of comics have. And she seems like she's picking things up fast and, and, and learning fast. Uh, she brought a few things up on the show that I thought, I thought were, were notable. Uh, one was, you know, how comics can sometimes get territorial to, Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, didn't stay on the topic very long. Uh, but, you know, she kind of identified, you know, uh, some comics. She didn't name anybody specifically, but she was talking about, uh, you know, getting on a festival, like a comedy mm-hmm. festival and uh, trying to get on the festival and, you know, other comics who have been on the festival, uh, maybe been like, how, how did you get on the festival so soon? Or that was a thought that she had. Yeah. Well, she said, I think, too, in the conversation that I brought that up because I asked her if, you know, she got some a little I basically asked if she got resentment from other comics because she got onto this festival yeah. right away. Yeah. And she basically said, well, she really didn't tell anybody because <laughs> yeah. she was kind of shell shocked that she got. Yeah, it, but 
But then she, you know, again, she kind of mentioned too that when she got there, she kind of felt out of her element because, you know, she was watching these comics who've been doing comedy for quite a while, crushing, and she didn't know if she was up to yeah. their caliber. <laughs> and I, I liked what she said specifically about that. I, I, I got to see comedy done well. Yes. Yeah. And that's, and it's interesting. How do you know what comedy done well is? Or like, how do you know what quality comedy is? Well, I mean, what's that mean to you? I, you know, somebody's crushing, they are owning the room. They've got confidence. Um, and they're doing it in a way where I can see someone who consistently can do it. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and what I typically look for in a, in, a, in a comic to know that it's not kind of a one-off type of deal is how well they're coming out from behind their own material. Like, okay. are, are they laughing at Dan because uh, Dan has good material? Or are they laughing at, you know, Dan who's funny and he also has material, right? Like, this yeah. is a funny well, person. Uh, yeah, but He's I able also... To use... <laughs> You use material that's, yeah. that's unique and the material is still very important. Oh, I think so too. Cause I think, cause there are comics that can go out and crush and they can do it with kind of hacky road material, yeah. I guess is for lack of better. Oh, no, that's just the way to describe it. It's hacky road material that they're doing and they'll crush because an audience, and that's something that an audience, I don't think can always pick up on what's can, what we, what we as comedians would consider good quality comedy. Because if it's funny to them, they don't care. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's making them laugh. They don't care if it was necessarily original to that comedian or not. Right. Right. I, I, I think it's kind of a step in the process where mm -hmm. you, you know, kind of go through a, a period where you are, are, are developing really good material because you have to have it. Yeah. Not, absolutely. not because you necessarily have a voice. But I also can pick up when a comic has a voice that he or she has, meaning like that material, that specific material wouldn't necessarily work for anybody else. Yeah. But well, and I think, you know, go, kind of t what you're talking about, this kind of leads into another thing that we're I think we're talking about today, you know, in order to get better with your material, getting feedback can be a yeah. very helpful way, very useful way when you're starting out. You know, and there's a variety of ways of getting feedback. You know, I in business and in most business thing, you know, applications and 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 different industries. Sometimes having a mentor. I mean, I had a mentor in comedy. I've had a couple mentors, and you know, if you can find yourself, you know, a mentor, somebody that's been doing comedy a lot longer than you and build a friendship and a relationship with, you know, having them in your back pocket to help with some feedback is a good idea. Uh, in this episode specifically, when we, you know, talked to Jade, uh, she mentioned that, uh, you know, at this festival, part of performing, they would give feedback. And so she got feedback on her set that, and she said that it was, it was pretty helpful. And she even, you know, they even, you know, she went back and forth and emailed them, for quite a while, which that more so is, you know, that's not just feedback. That's kind of turning into a, a mentorship. <laughs> right. But good for her for going out and getting that feedback. Absolutely. I, I think a lot of comics are afraid of what the answer is going to be or afraid to get feedback because of how it might make them feel, or they might have to come to terms with, you know, some things that they got to work on. She doesn't yep. seem like she's afraid of that. No. And just like we talked about in episode 279 about using data to get better, this is that data. Yep. Right? Like this is yep. this is critical feedback that you can source other comedians for. I really yeah. applaud that. Yeah, and, you, and I mean you just when it comes to getting feedback, you have to get over your ego. Uh, you know, and it, and I don't care where you're at in your career. There's always room for improvement, you know. And I know we talked about it on the episode, you know, and I've talked about it plenty of time. Anybody that knows me knows that this is my how I feel about it is somebody approaches you with uh, an, an idea for a tag or some feedback or, or whatever it might be. Listen to them. You just don't have you don't have to apply it if it doesn't fit you or your voice, you know, but you can right. still listen to them without being disrespectful. And I've been doing, you know, I've been doing comedy almost 13 years. And when somebody has a 
an idea for a tag, I'll hear them out. Or and even so, like I'll still take feedback. If you know, it. there's a lot of times you'll do these. Sometimes you'll do these contests, and the you know, like at the local comedy club, and some will get feedback. They'll have notes that they'll give you if you want them. And anytime I've ever had the opportunity to get notes, I always take it. Because even though I've been doing comedy a while, it doesn't mean there ain't room for improvement. Yeah. You know, or sometimes that the, the notes aren't even oh, to help you necessarily improve. Sometimes it's an idea for a tag or right. a way that you can take a joke. Because a lot of times the people judging these contests are industry, industry professionals or other comedians who've been doing comedy longer than you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, um, a lot of times there's feedback in feedbacks everywhere and you really have to, you have to kind of have a state of mind that, that it is everywhere and you got to listen for it because I had somebody come to one of my shows a year and change ago and it really impacted me. Now this was not a comedian. This is just some fan who, you know, wanted to come see a show. She saw oh, it. I got a fan. Yeah. Mm, a I'm fan. Josh with a fan over yeah. here. Yeah, <laughs> My <laughs> one fan. Nice flex, um, bro. <laughs> yeah, well, gotta get it in where I can. Uh, so th th this was an attendee. This was a uh, comedy enthusiast who wanted to to come to a show, and I, I knew her outside of it. She came, she saw it, and she said, uh, "She said, wow, you know, you kind of have this different persona. Like your voice changes a little bit." that's really interesting, you know? And, she, yeah. and she, I think she was just trying to be complimentary. I enjoyed the show. I noticed this. Yep. And so I simple observation. Totally. But after I processed it, I went back and, and really studied, you know, again, kind of collecting that data, going back and listening to several recordings. And I was like, you know what? Yeah. I, 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 I don't sound like I'm in the same room as people sometimes, at least during that little phase, <laughs> like it's almost as if I didn't need the microphone. I was speaking too loud. Yeah. Volume was too high, um, which is probably kind of off putting for people in a yeah. way. And it kind That's of funny was felt disconnected. Yeah. Right. It's and funny I went back and worked on it. We talked about that in this episode about how yeah, volume. Don't yeah, know how yeah. To I was going to tie that <laughs> off as well. Yeah. You guys totally did talk about volume and it really is important. It is. Yeah. Having being able to have some mic technique is huge. You know, you, you see it a lot, you know, because that's the thing, you know, too, like it's a lot of our comedy shows, you know, unless they're in, and even when they are in a comedy club, sometimes they don't have a sound person right. running sound. You know, most comedy clubs and shows at comedy clubs will, but when you're doing a show at like a brewery or a bar yeah. and it's an independent produced show, they're just setting up the PA and letting it go. And they can't really, they don't really have, because it's also distracting. They don't have like a sound booth where they can hide. You know, and so usually where the adjustments can be made are up on stage. So it's like they don't want to go up and ruin somebody's set because they're trying to, you know, monitor the the volume according yeah. to each performer. So you got to keep that in mind. Yeah. But yeah, that's <laughs> that's a good point. I just yeah, it was funny when you brought it up because I was just like, hey, this is something we talked about, too. <laughs> good old mic technique. That's for sure. What do you do though? This is a quite, this is another thing we talked about. I think this is an important thing to kind of, you know, is that, you know, uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. Lose your train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> see what, see what did I did there. there. <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah. You can, it, it can definitely happen, man. That oh, is a scary feeling. It's happened to me, especially early on uh, earlier in my career. Yeah. That had happened a couple times where I just like completely blanked out. And I don't know, I, you know, looking back at those times when that happened, I don't even remember what I did. <laughs> if I'm being honest. I think I just stumbled through my time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tried to do some terrible or mediocre crowd work. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I do that. Like, I'll go to crowd work and just, just kind of, you know, until I find my place again and then start. That's definitely happened to me. And it, that that is just a 
scary place, man. It is. And it's so hard to like, I mean, there isn't no real right or wrong way on how you like approach getting out of it. You know, you have to just figure out what works for you. Cause you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes you just need to do a hard reset and you, if you can't remember the joke you were trying to tell, you just uh, take accountability and, and say, Hey, I forgot what I was talking about and yeah. I don't know where I was going. So, um, and then go to and right. go, you know, whatever comes to your mind, go that direction. <laughs> you could write some save lines for when that happens and go, well, uh, my brain shuts off when I'm about to deliver a bad punchline or what? what I, yeah, I that's know. a really good save. Just so, hopefully you can remember your saves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> In that moment. Yeah. Hopefully like your, your, <laughs> you can, your brain has some subroutine that it runs when you, when you totally just stop. But yeah, I, I think the worst thing to do is to to not acknowledge it, especially if it's noticeable to the crowd. Yep. But so you know, too. a lot of times that stuff's not that not as noticeable as you think. Yeah, I'd be interesting if you're listening to this episode. I would be lis- interested to hear uh, other people's thoughts about what they do when they kind of lose their train of thought on stage. What are some of the things you found that have worked for you? You can either uh, send us an email at the art of bombing pod at gmail.com or go to the art of bombing bomb squad, Facebook group, join the group. Or if you're already in the group, you know, start a thread. We'd be interested to see what other comics are doing to uh, address that and to kind of, you know, find their way back to their train of thought. (laughs) Totally agree. Cause it's scary on stage when that happens. That's for sure. So yeah. So go, that's the action item this week. That's the action item. Tell us how you deal with losing your train of thought, how you get that thought back and how you recover. And we'd love to hear that. And uh, thank you for listening. Uh, we'll be back next week with an all new episode. Uh, make sure you follow the podcast, wherever you're listening, wherever you get your podcast, make sure you subscribe. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Have a great weekend. This has been a Dan Bublitz comedy production. Roar.